Hey everyone, welcome Azure Cosmos DB Live TV. I'm your host, Mark Brown. I've got Rory Preddy with us this week. How are you, sir? I've got a bit of a cold here, uh, but it is summer in Johannesburg, South Africa. So hopefully I'll recover quickly. Uh, how's the weather wherever you are, Mark? Yeah, not bad. Uh, what are we at? 88 Fahrenheit. So what is that? About 29, 30 something. Low 30s. Oh, no, don't, don't ask me to do that conversion. I've never yeah, been able no. to. But you know what? We're, we're all set for you here on the show today. So I brought me with uh, a box of Kleenex here. Uh, so if you need any, I will, I guess I'll have to IO this to you to South Africa from Los Angeles. Just put so. it in FedEx and just send it to me. I think DHL is the only thing that will get between us there. <laughs> but we'll try that. I'm going to try an inner office envelope, uh, Microsoft style there. Uh, I brought this can of air. Uh, that might be useful, although it would probably freeze your nose. Which it, it was might... the first rain today, so maybe you know th that caused it because you know the the butterfly flapping into uh, one part. Maybe you created the the storm. That's right. It's like a, a some Fibonacci sequence off a leaf and a piece of dust or whatever that launched a thousand viruses of cold throughout South Africa and the and the universe. Is that it? <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> hey, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, you know what? We've had a ton of uh, great shows on Java uh, and Spring Cloud. We had uh, Kushagra uh, from our team, from the engineering team. He's our engineering lead for well, a bunch of our SDKs, but uh, the Java and the Spring one uh, are, the, are kind of the two biggest. Uh, we've had Mark uh, on the show as well, uh, and he's talked about Java and Spring. Uh, so we've got you on. This is uh, so got kind of like the full set uh, for all my favorite Java folks. Uh, floating Mark around is a very hard person to follow. So I've taken his talk that he did before, and I've kind of like uh, extended a lot of the content to match his incredible talk, uh, which is on the YouTube channel. I, I highly recommend going to watch Mark Heckler's session with you. Uh, uh, well, you, Mark Brown. Um, yeah. But I've got a, an incredible demo to show you that, that goes a little bit more into detail. Uh, it's a, a, a really kind of meaty, uh, let's, let's run it in production uh, example. Oh. Um, yeah, so uh, hopefully the demo gods are shining uh, bright on me. It is uh, <laughs> at, at 11, uh, 10 p.m. here, so there is no shining of anything outside, but... Uh, uh, we've got a lot of demos and a lot of new tools and um, some really great cutting edge um, uh, RDE tooling that I want to show you. Wow. 10 p.m. So at 1 p.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. your time. What, do you, what, what is the time in South Africa? Is it you're not on BST or? or it's South know. African standard time. We don't have enough money to do time zones. So we kind <laughs> of just did. One time zone. You guys can't change your time, your your no. clock every year. No. Uh, boy, I tell you what, I think everyone here in the U.S. is probably jealous right now. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I I do sometimes have to change my clock to cater for the Europeans and Americans. Uh -huh. I don't know how you do it. I just don't know how you do it. It's just you just wake up and you're just in another time zone. It's yeah, nobody wants to do it. Uh, yeah, well, well. Whatever. Well, someday we will. Our sanity will arise, and we will stop doing that. So, in the meantime, uh, let's talk about Spring Cloud and Cosmos and uh, what you got for us this week. So, Spring Cloud Azure, which is not to be confused with uh, our previous offering called Spring Cloud Apps. Now, Spring Cloud Apps is actually a Kubernetes offering that we have. So, Spring Cloud Azure is a set of libraries that we have our engineers working tirelessly on that allows us to really create a environment um, that is very uh, uh, idiomatically similar to a Spring developer to create, rapidly create uh, applications. Now, Mark did an incredible demo uh, initially in, in a previous session, and I'm going to take a lot of that learning and then show you a end-to-end -end example that uh, takes microservices and uses caching and key vault uh, at the same time. Yeah, this is great. So all the different services and their SDKs basically exposed through kind of the spring kind of environment or framework or 
uh, or the spring cloud as it, as it were uh, here. Is that what you're going to show us? Yes. Uh, and uh, I'm also going to show you how to use Redis cache uh, along, I know they're a little bit of a competitor, Mark, but along with Cosmos <laughs> DB as a, a, a front end cache. We're all friends. It's okay. We're all friends here. <laughs> okay. So from an agenda point of view, uh, we're just going to do a recap of Spring Cloud Azure, what it does, why it's so powerful. Then we're going to go into the meat and potatoes of our session. We're going to do a demo. And then I'm going to show you uh, tooling. Now, there's a lot of, there's two camps that I, I love to show. There's the IntelliJ camp, and then there's the VS Code uh, camp. So I'm going to show you both and okay. some of the tools uh, with, with that. I don't know if you've ever seen this nice little graphic. This is, was uh, done by one of our engineers here. Um, and that's, that's him there. And, and basically, what is Spring Cloud Azure? Now, it's a way to use known Spring idioms, uh, idiomatic. And you know, the average Spring developer, now, in, in the beginning of Java and all of the shenanigans, there was J uh, Java EE, Java Enterprise mm -hmm. Edition. Now, Spring came about because um, Java EE was kind of uh, maturing too slow. And uh, Rod Johnson and Spring Source created um, Spring and basically revolutionized the way that uh, POJOs, planar Java objects, interacted with uh, their container and, and really did uh, justice for injection. So dependency injection, where you take an object and you inject it into the context of the object, uh, sorry, of the, uh, the um, uh, application. And it sits with uh, Spring Cloud Azure, it sits on top of the Azure SDK. Now, the Azure SDK is a, uh, a, a, a Java abstraction. You also get JavaScript and .NET, and it allows you to interact with the control plane, the Azure Resource Manager, and do anything you want with uh, your Azure resources. And the Azure SDK is a very low-level uh, API that allows you to do basically anything. The problem with that, it's not really created with the mindset of a developer. And the average developer doesn't really want to understand everything uh, about um, being able to you know, under, uh, process certain data and certain Azure resource life cycles. So when do you use uh, Azure, well, Spring Cloud Azure? So in general, if you're gonna use Spring and Azure, uh, and not just Java and Azure, so if you, if you have a basic Java app um, or a, a web app, you, you should use the Azure SDK. Uh, but if you're going to use Spring and Azure, you're going to want to use Spring Cloud Azure. You don't want to change the underlying code. You want to use your Spring idiomatic uh, lifecycle. And you want to avoid specific Azure SDKs to keep the apps portable. Um, and then minimize the learning curve, obviously. You want to use the Azure SDK to leverage sp uh, product-specific features. It's not, um, Spring Cloud Azure is not as uh, powerful, but it's also not kind of as cumbersome as the Azure uh, SDK. So my, my colleague Mark Heckler covered some of this also, but mm. it's very broad. There's a lot of libraries you can kind of uh, use here. So uh, my, my favorite, obviously, is Spring Data. So you can use SQL Database, uh, uh, MySQL, Postgres, Mariah DB. I, I don't know if you've heard about it, but there's also a, a database called Cosmos DB, Mark. And in Cosmos DB, you can use SQL, uh, Mongo, and Cassandra. And you can talk to it in a kind of repository. So like, you know, the mm -hmm. MVC model view controller, <clears throat> you can kind of use it in a, in a, a repository uh, pattern that you normally do with uh, Spring. But not only that, you can use Spring Security, so Active Directory. You can go into Spring Messaging. Uh, Spring Cloud um, with uh, all of these NAS services. And I'm going to show you the Redis uh, portion of Spring Cloud. And these interact. So these Spring Cloud features here interact very nicely with uh, Spring Data. Then Zero Trust. So if you want to use Key Vaults, I'm going to show you a demo also with Key Vaults. Spring Cache with Redis Cache. Micrometer. Uh, Spring Resources. Spring Integration Service Bus. Storage Queue. And then uh, Reactive Data with SQL Database, MySQL, um, and also Postgres. And uh, reactive data, and uh, Mark uh, showed you a little bit of a demo, is if you use streams, so you can actually stream the data. 
Now you can access all of these features and the nice thing is that they've upgraded them all to use Terraform. Uh, that's the, if you heard that, that's our power just go off. I'm running an inverter here. Oh, okay, so, uh, it's not your uh, not your microwave. Uh, no, your... that is not my microwave. That is uh, load shedding in South Africa. So don't worry, I am running an in, an inverter here. You can access all of these resources, and if you go to Spring Cloud Azure, all of these these uh, resources actually come with a Terraform script. So you can just do a mm. one little Terraform script, and I'm going to show you in the demo also how I got started, and it just starts up everything for you, and then you can actually get started with any one of these Spring Cloud Azure uh, demos. So in your in your demos, you're going to see there there are multiple libraries. So in this example here, I've got the Spring Cloud. Um, the Spring Cloud Azure uh, Starter Data Cosmos. Now, Spring Data uses repositories to actually go in and get your uh, your objects there. So um, that's the demo I'm going to show. So the first thing you want to do, we've got three steps. You want to bootstrap your application with Spring Initializer. And my colleague Mark Heckler showed you how to do that in the previous session. It basically creates a framework for you, a, a, a little uh, starter project that you can yep. go in and you can add your libraries to that. Yep. Then you want to add the, uh, the Azure Spring Cloud dependency either manually or you can actually do it by the uh, Spring Initializer. And then you want to automatically configure your Spring application to the Azure service. I'm going to show you how to do that though. So that's the in the Maven tools there, it's a pom.xml. So your pom basically is kind of your structure, your project structure. It gives a, also a very basic life cycle to uh, how you want to build and deploy your application. You can see there, there's the uh, group ID, the Maven group ID for com.azure.spring. Uh, and then you've also got the artifact ID, uh, springcloud.azure-starter-data-cosmos. Uh, and in those examples that I gave you with Spring Cloud Azure, there's a lot of also Maven dependencies that you can use. We're going to go through a few of them in the demo also. And then you auto wire Cosmos DB. So in your application.yaml, um, you have a little YAML file there, and you have your endpoint for your Cosmos DB endpoint, and then your database, Cosmos uh, database. That's the, the database name. Now in your Java class, all you're going to do there is you're going to go uh, at annotate uh, auto wired for your repository, and then you can actually use your repository. It just goes in and injects it. It goes and scans, and I'm going to show you with the tooling. This is the, the little bit of the, the, the how it works, the kitchen sink. In the later demo that I'm going to do with the tooling, I'm going to show you how it does this, because I'm going to go dig into the source code, um, and I'm going to show you how it does this, because it actually goes and does a class path scan for the properties and goes finds those properties there and injects it into the user repository. And then you can use, in this example, go in and go... Uh, save it and get your objects back if it returns a object. So there's a lot of references and it's very well maintained by our, our engineering team. You can go to aka.ms uh, spring-cloud-azure. It gives uh, demos here, how to use each service, the APIs for each service, how to get started here, and it's pretty well uh, maintained. So that's everything I wanted to show you about the intro. The next is I'm going to show you a little bit about our demo. So this is the Spring Pet Clinic and Cosmos DB in the demo. So the, the Spring Cl Pet Clinic is a canonical example. It's in multiple different formats. In this format that we're going to do is a microservice version of the Spring Pet Clinic. So we're going to take um, all of these different services here, owners, uh, vets, and pets, and we're going to break up each one of those services into a project. And then we're going to connect each one of those projects into Cosmos DB. And it's going to retrieve the information. And then it's going to connect to the Spring Cloud services. Now, some of those Spring Cloud services I mentioned there, Redis Cache. So it's going to actually front the Cosmos DB into a Redis Cache. Then it's going to use Key Vault to retrieve the Cosmos DB settings. And then obviously it's going to use uh, Cosmos DB all the same time using config services and discovery services to go in and retrieve uh, all that information. So this is a, a little bit of a, uh, a, a blueprint of the application here. You can see right at the bottom here, we have our little Cosmos DB um, icons here. And those yeah. feed into the customer services. It has a REST API, uh, the VET service, which has a REST API. And then the visit service, so you can take your 
um, your customer can take a, a pet to uh, visit a vet. Now, the vet service, the customer service, and the visit service doesn't actually know about each other. What they need to do is they need to go in and register with a, a Eureka service discovery. Now, the Eureka service discovery is going to then keep a little registry and also fetch the config for in a, a Spring uh, Cloud config server. At the same time, the customer service, vets, and visit service are going to get their own config. This config could be anything like what port it's going to run, uh, some variables it's going to use. And that is that config there is actually stored on a Git repo. We also have a admin server and also a logging server. Now, the, these services are actually load balanced through a uh, API gateway and also using a key vault to retrieve the Cosmos DB settings. So it's not as complex as you thought, but don't worry, I will show you where to actually get the uh, repository so you can actually get started uh, with uh, this demo um, when you want to. So that's enough for uh, PowerPoint for the time being. Let's get out of there and let's go exit there and let's go into and show you. First of all, I want to show you how this works. So uh, this is the Spring Pet Clinic and I'm running this on localhost because I'm running it under Docker Compose. It's not uh, deployed into Azure uh, because the actual application is a fork of the original um, Spring Pet Clinic uh, application, and uh, that uses Docker Compose. So in the here, you've got owners, and owners uh, will retrieve a list of owners here. And then you've also got uh, vets, and vets uh, will retrieve uh, a list of vets. Let's go back into owners. I think sometimes the Docker Compose does actually uh, need to be restarted because it is very memory intensive. I am running on there we go, uh, a Mac, and I've only given it a certain number of uh, uh, CPUs and memories because I don't want to actually take too much of my uh, PC uh, resources. So this is the Docker Compose here, and these are all of the services that we are running here. And then I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio Code as soon as my customer service shows me that it, it is behaving. So while this is coming up here, I want to show you actually, uh, let's go into here, the, uh, the Spring Sample uh, repository that I got this application uh, from here. So we're going to go to Azure uh, Samples, and we want to go to uh, uh, Spring uh, Azure Spring Boot Samples here. So uh, Azure Spring Boot Samples, and you can see here in Azure Spring Boot Samples, we have quite a lot of samples, and each one of these actually has Terraform in there, so you can actually get started. There is even a very nice Cosmos DB sample here. Mark, so you can actually go into here and you can see there, there's Spring Data. You can do a multi database account or a single account here. And then it has a Terraform script and the source files here. Now, inside the Spring Boot samples, I've just uh, uh, cloned the, uh, the Spring Pet Clinic microservice application. And this is the application that we're going to show you the first demo that we're going to do. And then we're going to do another little demo with one of them with the tooling here. And you can see here, I've got a Docker. Um, uh, folder here for the, the base Docker files here. I've got some docs if you want to go read up on it, some media for the images. And then I've got my admin server, so you can actually use Spring Cloud admin. Then I've got my API gateway, the load balancer, my config servers, the central config, my customer service uh, for uh, customers, my vet service, and my visit service, and then the discovery service, which is the Eureka service. So let's go back into Docker and make sure, okay, it's, everything's running. Let's go back into here, and let's go see here. Okay, can I get my uh, owner services here? Else I will have to restart uh, Docker Compose here. And let's see. Yay, it's there behaving. Lord demos, yay. So over here, I've got my <laughs> owners here, and I've got George Franklin. And George Franklin should have, uh, uh, well, he doesn't have, uh, in, uh, there's some information. And he's got Leo, which is a pet. And I can uh, go in and uh, edit George and uh, submit the, the service there, or I can go in and uh, take Leo to a, uh, a, a vet. And you can see here, he has the vets here, there's James Carter and everything like that. So um, I wanna show you exactly how that works. So I'm gonna go into Visual Studio Code. Uh, let's go into Visual Studio Code. And you can see here, this is the project that I've just cloned. And inside that project, let's start from the, the beginning of it here. Uh, I've got all of these folders here. 
uh, for each of the microservices. There we go. I've got the API gateway. Um, and then I've got the Terraform folders and uh, the pom.xml. I want to show you. I'm going to start there. The pom.xml. Now, the pom.xml is the Maven folder, um, the Maven uh, kind of uh, life cycle. And you can just go uh, MVN uh, package. And we're going to skip the test because this test kind of don't work. And when that happens, when you go Maven package skip test, it's going to go, oh, where am I first? Uh, okay, now I'm in the Terraform <laughs> folder. I don't want to do that in the Terraform folder. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so now I'm going to do that skip test. And it's just going to build the project. Yeah. And in each one of these projects here, there's a target folder. So if I go into the customer folder here, and you'll see there there's a target folder, it's going to create a little uh, jar file. And that jar file really is what we're going to deploy um, in our Docker, uh, a Docker compose. So it's, it's finished there, it's built it there. And then I've got all of these uh, uh, modules that I'm gonna build. And then I've got a little Docker compose file here that basically says, go and uh, create a instance of all of these projects. So if I go into the uh, customer service here, it's gonna say, okay, cool, go found, uh, find that jar file. Let's see, jar launcher there. Um, and it is going to go in and find that jar file there and go in and create that customer service then. Um, so there's the, the actual image there and it's gonna build the, the customer service there. And that, it's gonna use that target folder. But there's a little bit more. So I'm gonna use the customer service just to go through as the example. The first thing I wanna show to you is that it has you, uh, an environment file called keyvault.env. Now that actually is created by my uh, Terraform file. Mm -hmm. So my Terraform file here only creates the, um, the, the database, the Redis key store, and the key vault. Um, but to do that, then you really need to go create it, and then it will create the, the key store.env. So you can see here, here's some of the, the resources. It's gonna create the Cosmos DB uh, 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 resource here. And then it's going to go in, I'm not gonna put this live on air there, but it's gonna create a keyboard.env that points to all of those resources, um, thanks to your Terraform file. But the Docker Compose then, when I run that, it's just gonna to connect to my keyboard.env, and then I'm gonna be able to actually use uh, the keyboard. So let's go into the customer service here, and let's see exactly how that works. So, um, yeah, so the first thing I need to show you with the, uh, the customer service here is that I could run this, if I was running this on um, Azure, I could actually run this with managed identity or also newly with the passwordless connection that is coming uh, probably this one uh, next month. And I won't have to use that keyvault.env file. But I do have yeah, the key that earlier. So the <clears throat> the Azure dot identity that it that is now getting support in uh, the Spring libraries, or has it, or coming? Yes. So that is coming up. I can't give you an exact date, but the passwordless service right now it supports uh, Microsoft SQL, Postgres, and uh, MySQL. But that is coming up to actually support uh, Cosmos DB, and that allows you to actually inject. Your uh, your Azure credentials. It kind of yeah. creates its own token and <clears throat> injects into Cosmos DB uh, real time without you having to worry ever about a password and uh, a, a hash. But we've got a hash. Then I'm not going to share it with you right now. Yeah. And then um, that hash actually is stored in my key vault. Um, and uh, let's go and see exactly how that works. So I've got my uh, let's just minimize there. I've got my uh, customer service here. And uh, then I've got my source folder and my resource folder. And then I've got an a application.yaml, a bootstrap.yaml. Um, and so let's go see the bootstrap.yaml. So the bootstrap.yaml is actually going to go in and set up the config. And it's going to say, OK, cool. Here's the config. Go fetch uh, the, um, the, the registry for the config. Go get the config. Uh, so the, the config server, and then uh, tell it tell the config server you are the customer service, and also register with the discovery service. So it's a it's a little bit uh, uh, complicated when when you look at it like that. But understand it knows where the config server is, mm -hmm. and it knows how to discover and uh, tell Eureka which service uh, it is uh, it is what its name is, and then all the other services 
will actually be able to use that service. So that's called the bootstrap.yaml. Uh, Once that is done, then it can actually use the application.yaml. And this is where all the magic uh, happens. So first of all, we're going to tell it that it is bootstrapped. It, it is going to take that config and find out exactly what it needs to be set up with. Then it's going to actually go into Azure and retrieve the credentials. You can see their key vault credentials here, uh, the, uh, the client ID, the secret, and the tenant ID. And then also uh, it's going to actually go find out the properties. It's going to take those Cosmos DB properties and inject it as property sources. Don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly how that does it then. And then you've got there, wow, I've got my Cosmos DB settings, and it's already got uh, the endpoints there uh, and also the key, and it is, even does populate query uh, mechanics, um, metrics, sorry. And then it's got cache for Redis cache. It's going to uh, set up Redis cache, and then the Redis cache is also going to use uh, the Redis URL and the Redis password. So how does, how does this actually word uh, work? Uh, with uh, the settings here. So let's go into uh, the uh, the Java files here, and I'm going to show you how it actually does uh, that injection and also gets uh, all of that uh, information from it. So I'm going to go into uh, Key Vault and into, let's go into here, into my portal. Uh, let's go into Azure Portal. Remember, the Terraform file is going to set up all of this for you, so you don't really have to worry too much about it. So here's my Key Vault that I have. And in it there, you'll see there that it's going to have a, uh, a Cosmos DB setting. So that Cosmos DB setting then is going to go back to my, um, my application. So there's my pet clinic, uh, simple application there, um, uh, sample. And this was set up by a Terraform. And then I've got my, uh, my actual keys here and my secrets. I can click on uh, the secrets here. And then you can see there I've got my uh, Cosmos DB key. The only problem about this is that the key vault itself on the, the, the Docker Compose is going to have a hash, um, but you can get around that with manage identity and also uh, passwordless. Yep. So you can see that I've got the Redis and also you can see that the name there is Redis URI. And if I go back into uh, my settings there, uh, where were we? There we go. It's exactly what we get there. There's the Redis URI. So now I can actually use Redis um, as is, and this is actually the application uh, YAML is a Spring Cloud um, application .yaml. And it's kind of, you can see there, set up there. Now, any of the annotations in Spring Cloud is going to be able to use those services. So for example, if I want to use cache, it, I don't actually have to specify, you can see there, uh, Redis, I can just use cache and it will just use it. If I wanted to use Cosmos, um, I can just annotate anything with Cosmos and I can go into uh, my, uh, my Spring Cloud services with the confidence that it is actually working. So let's go through now the customer service here and see exactly uh, what uh, that allows us to do here. So let's go first of all into the customer service application. So this is where we start off the customer service application. You can see there, and it just goes in and runs the application. But the minute it does that, it actually goes and starts a few services. And this is where the Spring Idiomatic services start though, because this is really a, uh, an injection, a really injection focused um, uh, application platform as uh, Spring Cloud. First of all, we're going to go enable caching, and that's a Redis cache. So it's going to take the uh, repository that we're going to do with our customer's object, and it's just going to cache it. And it's as simple as that. And I know a lot of developers will say, this is black magic. How does this work, though? Um, but Spring developers are used to that uh, with that. Next, it's going to enable Discovery Client. And that's that config service. It's going to go in and say, hey, everyone, hey, vets and visit service. This is who I am and how I work. And then finally, it's going to go Spring application. So it will actually go and bootstrap uh, that application. That enable so, caching thing in there, <clears throat> is that so? Is that possible because there's a provider model yes. behind it? And then, and then you implement, or Redis implements that provider model? Yes, so this this library actually here, let me show you the library. So remember those uh, libraries that I told you about? So yeah. uh, let's go find the Redis mod, uh, module here. So there's the Spring Data Cosmos, but there's also, there's the Key Vault, and also there's the Data Redis. So all uh, we have see. to do with Data Redis is just have the cache annotation, 
set up the Spring Cloud YAML to say that I'm going to use uh, caching, and it will go in and it will cache all of the data objects that you have there in a, a, a first level cache. That, is, there a, is there an in-memory uh, provider for that as well? or Yeah, like... there's an Azure cache. So you can actually use Azure cache for that also though. But uh, this example, we're using uh, Redis cache. So Azure cache is a competitor <laughs> uh, to, to Redis cache. Now, how does this Redis cache actually look like? Now there's an, a nice little um, uh, 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 toolkit here. I, I didn't want to uh, go right into here, but I, I think that uh, it, it is great for the, the viewers here. So you can see here, here's the owners. And if I double click on the owners, there's the cache. This is the first level cache that I've, I've triggered before here. This is a bit in uh, a binary here. And every time I, I hit that uh, owner service, it's actually going to just go in and retrieve it. And I'm going to show you some speed, but I'm going to live on air, go in and invalidate that cache. And I'm going to show you exactly why this is important and the speed improvements that you can actually have. Because I'm in South Africa, so I want to actually get some ca uh, uh, cash rather than going into my Cosmos DB, which I think is sitting in East US, which is pretty far far away. Yeah, that's pretty far. So let's go back into here. Now let's actually go into our model, which is our, our owners and our pets. And you can see that the owner is a, it's a pretty simple uh, little Lombok, uh, and Lombok is... A, uh, a nice little, you can see getters and setters. It's a kind of a, a generator that goes in and creates it. We don't have getters and setters in Java just yet, uh, but we got getters and setters. It's going to create a container, which is our Cosmos DB object called owners. And then it's going to go in, create an ID here, and then uh, all of the different things that you can do with an owner. Uh, it's going to say city, address, and then the same with pet. It's going to do the same there, getters and setters uh, with the container. And then we've got our repositories. Now, look how simple this is, Mark. All it hmm. says is just annotates with a repository. It says here, here's an interface called owner repository, and it just extends Cosmos repository. That's it. That's all the SQL that you have to write there. And it knows exactly what to do because it actually has links to the Cosmos repository. It knows that it's going to cre even create it and keep the life cycle because this is Spring Data. So if you go here and you see there, there's uh, Comdet Azure Spring Data Cosmos. And Spring Data follows a certain life cycle that the developers know that they they, they want to actually follow though. So hey, you know you got it right when you got uh, more stuff in there for licensing and authors and maintainers and- These are the original- these, Than so, you do yeah, on actual forked, code. We so. forked this for, off the original owners here. And you can see here, there's a lot of licensing and everything like yeah. here. So, yeah, so this is like it's one like line of code. of it right there. So. And the, the pet repository also here does the same here. It just uh, does that. But if you want to do also some queries here, it goes, you can see that you can even do a query uh, that you want there to uh, get pet types. So the, this pet repository then is going to be called by a REST service. So let's go into here. So you've got uh, owner resource. And the owner resource there is going to, let's go into where we inject it. Uh, and then we've got uh, owner repository. So it actually has an owner repository here. And then the owner repository is going to have postal get mapping here for, uh, he has create owner uh, and then find owner. And we're going to have a get mapping there. Uh, yep. It's going to say find by ID. And that's pretty simple. And that's also in a Spring idiomatic service there for find by ID. You can see there, that's uh, the CRUD repository. And that's going to actually create a REST repository. And the, the one I want to show you also there is owners and it's going to find all. Now, if you remember, when we go into uh, owners here, let's go into uh, pet clinic here. When we hit owners here and all owners here, uh, hopefully Docker hasn't uh, misbehaved again. Let's go see our Docker file here. Sometimes, oh, Docker, you are uh, really problematic today. Let's go back into here. And let's go and start the, the customer service there. It is it is running way too a uh, few uh, uh, resources here. So if you want to know how to uh, in, improve your resources here, if you have a, a big laptop here, you can actually increase it the CPU and the, the memory here. But I'm not going to do that uh, live live on air. That's that would be crazy talk. <laughs> the end of our uh, show probably. Yeah. Yeah. Let, that's uh, yeah. So let, let's go see the customer service. There we go. <clears throat> Up in the game here. Uh, let's go in here and let's go veterinaries and then owners here, uh, all here. And it, it should actually retrieve uh, those owners once we actually get through here. Let's just do a little refresh. You can actually see the, the owner service here. If we go into 
uh, that service here. It will take a few seconds to actually start up. But here's the log file. Wow. Um, and then it's actually going in there. You can see the registry of the customer service uh, with status up completely uh, the in initialization. Um, and then it will actually go in if, if it has everything right. It will go in and register the service. Let's go in and see the, the, the owner service here. And hopefully the law of demos is going to actually let me do that. Also, I'm just going to restart the Docker live on air because that's just the, the way that we roll. Um, I suppose let's go in and uh, go in. Okay, so that didn't really like it there. Let's go in and uh, start that one more time, and then we can actually see if we can actually get it. So wh while that's restarting here, let me actually show you how to actually refresh the cache with the uh, the Spring Play Connect. So you saw there that when I originally actually went in and uh, let's go into here. When I originally went in and I clicked on uh, the service, the second time that I uh, kind of got those owner services there, it was pretty quick because I've actually got a cache running there. But you can evict the cache. So you can see here, there's get mapping, clear cache, and I can actually go cache evict owners. And then I can just go forward to an HTTP status and clear all cache. Now, that, that, this is a little bit hairy here because it basically means that if you have a cache, it's going to go in and it's going to delete, if you see here, that little cache there. So that little simple key should be actually blank. So, uh, so we're going to do this live on air, and I've got a little script that uh, we're going to run. And we're going to go to uh, our local host, uh, clear cache, and we're going to go see if we can clear the cache and exactly what that does because it's going to retrieve the cache there and it's going to go see if we can actually do it. Let's make sure that we are started here and we can go down here. And uh, if not, then we can go into, wow, okay, that did not work. Let's actually go back in one. I'll run this on a different demo here. So obviously it's not too happy here. Maybe it's because there is load shedding and uh, there is the services that is not running here. Let's try one more time there with the customer service else I'm going to actually just move on to our <laughs> tooling demo after that though. So let's let's go through that. And let's the see. The best part of a live show, Rory, is uh Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's always, people want you to achieve uh the, the success, but a lot of people are actually going, can he actually get it uh working here? Um <laughs> So w once you have that uh, working, then then you're actually going uh, to go sync. And remember, this is a microservice application, so a lot of things can actually work uh, well. But you can actually go in there, and you're going to go clear cache. So customer owners, clear cache. It's going to go and refresh your cache, and then the, the actual uh, owners are going to be populated again. Um, and uh, we're going to do that. So let's let's see if we can actually uh, come back to the little, a little bit later then, um, and I'm going to actually start with our tooling demo, which is also really exciting, because I've got a new uh, extension I'm going to show with uh, IntelliJ, which is brand new. I don't know if you are aware of it, Mark, but IntelliJ can now do uh, Cosmos uh, DB. Let's go in there. So uh, it's still misbehaving. But uh, we'll go and let's just stop all of those services there. And we can just actually go in and say, stop you all violently. And we can actually go in and see that a little bit uh, I later. saw that announcement, by the way, on IntelliJ. Was that, is that, was for our Mongo API? Or was that yes, for Yes, so our... it's not for the, C, uh, the SQL API. That's yeah. still coming. Uh, we're gonna. I'm going to show you with the Mongo API. So first of all, I showed you with Redis here. But you can actually go in here. Uh, to the resources. So let's go in and you can actually see here, we've got Cosmos DB. Look at that, Cosmos DB. So this is very new. Um, and uh, over here, I've got the pet clinic application. Now you can actually go into the pet clinic application and you can, on Cosmos DB, you can create a server. You can also go in here, you can create database, delete account, copy connection string. And this is, this is, uh, pretty new, and you can actually see here. Here's the end-to-end -end example here, but we don't, we haven't actually launched uh, the the ability to go edit the data. You can you can see here. Here's the documents, um, and then if you click on each one of those documents, it's actually going to. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, no, that's the uh, pet clinic SQL. Oh, sorry, I, I made the mistake. Uh, it actually, this is VS Code. Um, and the IntelliJ one doesn't actually uh, let you do that. So this yeah. is VS Code, yeah. actually lets you edit it uh, there, um, and it also allows you to actually go in and do all of that. Um, so let's go into IntelliJ. Let's open up IntelliJ here, and I want to show you the, the similar to uh, tooling 
that you have with IntelliJ. Now, IntelliJ, uh, love it or hate it, and if you and, and every developer is opinionated here, but IntelliJ is a full-fledged IDE that we partnered with uh, JetBrains, and it allows you also to do uh, advanced refactoring and also uh, a, a database manipulation. So, in can here, I ask you uh, an opinion on? Would you prefer, I guess, or is that too oh, they, is that too sharp a question for you? No. So uh, VS Code was never created as a full fledged RDE. It's actually a yeah. code editor, so right. they don't actually compete with the same the, in in the same services. Um, so I love IntelliJ as a full fledged RDE, and I love Visual Studio Code as a uh, a little code editor. So here's the Cosmos DB. You can see here, um, we saw that we can edit. In Visual Studio Code, let's go back into Visual Studio Code. I can edit the uh, pet clinic samples there. I can actually go in, and I can even go uh, medicine there. And uh, if it if it has a good ID, and I'm doing it re with referential integrity, it'll actually let me edit it directly off here. But uh, that's the SQL API. Let's go back into uh, IntelliJ. So let's make that a little bit bigger. Uh, let's. And but if you, if you see here, that's the pet clinic sample. It doesn't actually let you an IntelliJ, but it does also, you can see there, uh, allow you to uh, double click on here and you can go through to the portal, but you can actually get uh, a nice little view here. So you can right click on Cosmos DB and you can go create. You can also view the Azure SDK. So look at this. So you can actually oh. view the Azure SDK and that's the reference book. So click on that and then you can actually get, and there is the the the, the starter, the, the Spring Cloud starter that I mentioned there before. And you can go in there and see all of that those yeah. documentations. That's Remember what cool. I showed you also um, with uh, Redis? Let's go and see, see if we can find that Redis one there. Redis, Redis. There's Redis then. And you can actually see how to add Redis there. And that's uh, the resource manager uh, or uh, Redis Enterprise um, and how to do it for the cache. You can also go in there. Remember Key Vault? Uh, yep. Let's go into Key Vault, um, and let's go. Did I spell Key Vault? Uh, there we go. Uh, Key Vault JCA certificates and everything. You can actually get all of that there. And you can just go add dependency into there. So that's the right click on there and view uh, Azure SDK. And you can also go in and create your your applications. But uh, with Mongo, we, we we've taken a little bit step further, and I've got a, a little application here that uh, is the uh, Quarkus uh, Superheroes. I know it's not spring, but uh, I've created a, a little application uh, with the database. And over here, you can actually go in and edit it with uh, Mongo. So if you uh, click on here uh, and uh, we go open, let's go there. You can go open in database tools. And then open in database tools allows you to actually go in and you can go in and uh, edit all of that. And with live editing here, so you hmm. can actually go in there, similar to what Visual Studio uh, Code did. Yep. And then uh, when this comes with uh, Mongo, I'm going to be able to actually go in and edit this. Um, let's go in here. And there's the, the fights with the, the Quarkus here. And I can go in and look at all of my uh, objects here. And I can uh, select those. Uh, it, it does take some time to refresh here. But I can go in and edit those. Um, and and view uh, that though. So this is a new feature that we've got here, um, and it's a, it's a great opportunity to actually go in. Uh, let's go in and just refresh that, um, and to go in and actually go and edit. So this is database tools, and you can go into there just by right clicking there and open in a database tool. There's my collection there. there. It's coming back, and then there's fights and fields. And I can go into fights and fields there, and I can go in and edit that, um, which, which is pretty great, which is a, a great opportunity for people uh, to use IntelliJ, because IntelliJ owns about 70, 65 to 70% of the, the IDE market here. And I can go in there, and uh, if I wanted to uh, go in and even edit and delete a row. Yeah, can I change index policies in here? No, with the... no, I, I don't think that you should live on air, but I can actually go in there and I can go delete row there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doc is already kind of giving us issue. Let's go back to Docker quickly here and let's just see. Uh, is it actually now? Give it a little uh, attention. Make sure Docker's still with you there. Yeah, that, there's Docker uh, there. And is the uh, let's see if our customer oh, service wow. now is working. Uh, so let's go back into uh, localhost and uh, let's go into home. Of course, it's working now. Uh, and owners, and let's see if it actually is owners. It's not going to see it's it's bum. There we go. Uh, so there's George Franklin. Now, now, if you saw there, if I hit refresh, watch how quick it is. It's quick and nice yeah. and, and quick. But now I'm going to inv inv invalidate the cache. So I'm going to just go there. Uh, ooh, 
that that's not the actual euro I wanted. Now, if you remember, that was like sub millisecond. Now I'm going to invalidate the cache uh, with clear cache. Now it's going to go back to the, the same page. Now I'm going to hit refresh. And you see how long it's taken because it's doing an end to end with the database. That's really and that that's cache a, and that's a call over the wire from yes. your home in cache? Johannesburg the all the way to Eastern US and Virginia, basically. That now you can open the pipe bigger with Cosmos DB, but what I wanted to show you really was with the Redis cache. It's an in memory cache, and it's a little bit quicker than actually going uh, to 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 Cosmos. But and all of that was it was actually just activated just with that annotation that uh, annotation, and it was created with the Terraform file there with uh, with that example. So I'm thinking uh, my little Mac with uh, Streamyard and everything is now behaving itself though, um, and uh, I do have. A bigger PC, so maybe next time I'll do that uh, on the demo with the, the bigger PC, though. But it's a great opportunity for you to go in and test all of these uh, services. Like I said before, you can just go in here to Azure Samples, uh, Azure uh, Spring Boot Samples here, and this is uh, under the Spring Pick and the microservices. And you can go through all of that there. You start off with the Terraform. Uh, just go Terraform uh, in it and Terraform apply, and yeah. it will go in and create it. And then you just do Docker Compose. Uh, which is exactly what I did there. And it all started locally um, and, and get everything running though. And then uh, obviously then uh, you'll have your resources. You wanna go in and afterwards delete your resources. Um, if you see here, I've got my, uh, my key vault. Uh, let's go into the key vault here. So let's see uh, the three services here that I've got. So I've got my, I should, I should see there my key vault, um, my um, my Redis cache. Uh, let's go in. Where is that? And finally, uh, yeah, there's uh, my uh, Cosmos DB. And the <coughs> Cosmos DB also has some some credible monitoring and that. So we can actually go into uh, Cosmos DB here, and we can see here that the uh, insights that Cosmos DB insights is just incredible. So we hit it a few times with owner. We can actually go in there, and now we can actually see the total requests. Uh, and for that in the last four hours, this, 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 this blew me away. Uh, um, I know this is uh, not, not new though, but you can actually go there and you can see there there's owners. It's got 81 requests there, total request count. And this should actually be lower. If you can see there, owners is 81, but pets is 96. So we're hitting that cache quite a few times because uh, the, the pets should actually be maybe even uh, way, uh, well, on, on par with the owners here. Uh -huh. And you can play around with that cache uh, around that uh, there. And you can also go into the Redis cache and see how do you invalidate it uh, with that though. And there's there's some great services that you can actually see here, a uh, request count uh, through that. Um, so yeah, so um, I think that uh, we are uh, 40, 50 minutes into that. So I wanted yeah. to show you a, a few other things uh, with that. I've showed you the uh, Cosmos DB uh, introspection, the uh, VS Code, um, the, oh, uh, one f further thing, I want to show you some behind the scenes and, and check this out. I'm going to stop Docker. Uh, it is a naughty bugger, but I'm going to stop Docker and I'm going to show you another project um, and I'm going to give you the link uh, to that project. And I'm going to, let's go file, open recent, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to show a, a to-do application. But the reason I want to show this, because I'm going to show you how it does that injection, because I found this absolutely fascinating. But, um, so here's my, uh, it's a, a little a to do application. It's got uh, a REST service here that basically says just get uh, to do's. Um, and it's got a, a, D, uh, a, a repository that goes Cosmos repository. And then it's got a little model, which are a to do item, similar to what we saw there. And I'm going to start this, but I'm going to start this with something called the Spring Boot dashboard because I'm gonna go and inspect my objects. So I wanna see the injection happen in real time. And it's, it's very optimistic here. So um, let, let's go in there. Now, the first thing I'm gonna uh, do is I'm gonna uh, run the Spring uh, uh, to do application. The problem with that is, is that I have to actually set my uh, Cosmos DB database. And I know that this is gonna fail because I haven't actually set my, my Cosmos DB database. So I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna go source uh, scripts and forward slash set environment variables. And then now I can actually do this. Now, uh, there's two, uh, three windows, apps, beans, and endpoint mappings. Now, no other language has this. Oh, let's go, come on, behave. Uh, let's just see here if we've got here. 
uh, and we want to make sure this actually happened before <laughs> also. Yeah. Um, let's go in here. Yeah, so it's still not uh, too bad. Let's go and let's show you here. So uh, let's go in and just make sure that we've got our correct um, resource mapping. And uh, we want to go into scripts. I did set the environment variable recently. Uh, let's go here. There's my Cosmos. Don't worry, I will delete it here. Yeah, so okay. I'm going to go uh, source again, source. Um, and then I can always do this at another time. And then I want to go uh, scripts and uh, set uh, env uh, variables dot uh, sh. Ah, OK. I don't think I did dot sh right at the end, though. That's why. So I actually had a, a backup file there. Also, always have a backup, Mark. Always have a, a backup. Let's see if this uh, this works now. Live demos, always very interesting. Uh, let's see. Connect, connect, connect. There we go. Connect. Now, what you'll see here, it's got the apps uh, that you can actually go and link this. I can open in the browser. Uh, let's see. It's a to-do list application here. So I can actually just go in here, and I can see my to-do list uh, application. It says wash my car uh, because I just, it just rained on it, buy milk. And I can delete these applications uh, from it. This is the, the built-in browser. You can see there it's going to localhost. Um, so let's uh, close that, the simple browser. And I'm debugging right now. Um, but you, more importantly, look at that. It's actually going in there and finding my objects for me, my oh. to-do list controller and to-do repository. And I can go into my uh, to item repository here. Um, and I, I can see there, I can go and inspect it. Now watch this, I'm gonna go into here. Now I can actually see what's going on in the, the background with the, the injection. And I can see it uses a Cosmos template, which I didn't even, wasn't even aware of. And then it uses a Cosmos config and then an auto configure. And then I can go through all the way into that. Now I can actually see that it uses a property file and it, it goes into the, the, the configuration property files and injects it there with the URI and the key. And that's the spring idiomatic feature that I, uh, I, I mentioned to you uh, around that and how it actually does that. So all you have to have is that YAML file or those settings and it actually goes in to do that. And I, what I want to uh, also show you here is that the, the REST file, remember that REST file here? Check mm -hmm. this out, Mark. If you can tell me that other languages have that also, Look at that. It actually puts the REST URL at the top there. And you can actually get it. And it does that by actually inspecting every object there with the spring actuator. So I've, I get that. And I can actually go there at home, or I can get my to-do list. And I can click on that. And it'll tell me if I just click on that. Uh, I don't know that about languages right. having that, but there's actually a REST tool. I just saw this as an extension in VS Code. Uh, that does something like that and yeah. allows you to do basically kind of unit testing on your API apps. Let's go back and I just want to show you the, the REST API. Where is that window? This is the problem with StreamYard that uh, it actually goes in and uh, creates a multiple uh, uh, um, uh, Chrome tabs. Uh, let's go back in there and let's click on, no, we want the... Uh, Lots of tabs there. Let's go back in there <laughs> and click uh, Spring To Do app there. There we go. And let's click that. And there we go. Uh, yeah. There's Buy Milk and Wash Car. And that is a great thing. But this is built into the actual uh, Spring Boot dashboard. Uh, <coughs> it comes with it and it allows you to actually go in, look at your beans, and also see that your Cosmos DB database actually is being bound uh, correctly, which is a great yeah. way to actually do that. Though. So the tooling uh, is really rich. Yeah, I think it's it's great. I agree with you, uh, and I love how kind of just complete uh, it all is uh, together there. So uh, yeah, absolutely cool, Rory. I love and this stuff. Remember, you can also go into resources here. Now I've got my to dos. Remember, I showed you to you earlier here. So and on uh, my to dos um, is in uh, Mongo. Yes, uh, no, uh, SQL. So I can actually go into Visual Studio Code. There's my to-dos there, and I can go in there. Remember the bar milk here? Let's go and see if we can change uh, bar milk. So there's my, my SQL uh, to-do item here, uh, my documents. Uh, there's there's wash car, and I can go in and... Uh, okay, it's not going to let me do it right there because it doesn't like the partition key, um, but I can actually do that. Uh, sure. if, uh, I remember there's a, a way to actually do that there. You can actually go in and, and edit that, or I can just go in and delete the document. What, what's the, let's do this live on here. There's, okay, I deleted the document. Let's go back in and see there. Let's go hit refresh here. 
there we go. We deleted yep. the live on air, which is nearly as fun as editing a live on air. I think the yes, petition, it it's, it's petitioned on Cosmos DB, so it doesn't like uh, deleting. So uh -huh. let's go back into our, um, our little uh, PowerPoint here. So first of all, I want to remind everyone uh, that you can use Cosmos DB for free, no credit card uh, uh, required, and it gives you 30 days. Am I correct? 30 days and 4,000 yeah. 4, RUs uh, that it, you can actually get. 4,000? So, I thought it was a little more than that, but it, either way, I mean, it's a lot for I mean, for doing dev and test. It's plenty for sure. So, so yep. and that, yeah, cosmos.azure.com forward slash try. Now, that yep. to-do demo that it did, this is a more advanced version of that. You can access all of that to-do demo uh, in there. So if you want a basic demo, you can go aka.ms cosmos db dash spring for the to-do uh, demo. And then the spring cloud samples the the magnum opus. Make sure you run it uh, on a little bit more memory so a Docker Compose actually behaves itself. You can do uh, uh, aka.ms spring cloud azure and you can also qr code there it goes to spring cloud azure so that's everything that i wanted to show you i know it's a lot and i, I know it was optimistic but everything kind of worked out in the, uh, the end uh, i even invalidated the redis cache live on air no this is great uh and you know hey people can always go back and and watch it again or watch it at half speed if uh <laughs> if you go too fast and you want to see that again right so you can you can keep up or whatever with it so uh this is great, uh, Rory. Fantastic having you on the show. You showed a lot of great stuff. Uh, I'm just more and more impressed with Spring uh, every time I see uh, it. It's just the fit and finish for that is just amazing, uh, and I can see why developers love it uh, because you can just you, can, you know it's just got a lot of uh, goodies, I guess, there to make you productive and and also I mean just cool things like being able to do unit testing on your APIs right out of your bean uh my gosh how cool is that right so uh great stuff well thanks for having me on uh, uh this week rory uh and thank you folks for joining us this was episode 63 uh feel free to check us out we've got lots of uh oh that's the wrong one that's a repo with a bunch of stuff in it uh where is our yeah past episodes right here my banners got moved uh come check out past episodes we've got uh, Mark uh, uh, Heckler, his uh, cohort uh, on the team. Uh, you can go check out his episode. And then Kashagra, uh, another episode on uh, our Java and Spring uh, SDKs. Uh, lots of great stuff. It's one of my, I think it's one of our best SDKs, uh, uh, the Spring Data one. And I'm glad that folks like you and other folks uh, in the Spring community like it. Um, I, I, you know, I hope we get lots more people that love and want to try it and, and use it. Uh, so, Yes, uh, thank you so much for joining us this week, folks. Uh, hey, come check out our user group. Every month we do a new meetup with a new guest. Uh, so come check us out on meetup there, aka.ms uh, slash Cosmos DB user group. Uh, next week, uh, I've got a uh, another cohort of mine from uh, the Postgres team who is now part of Azure Cosmos DB. So I'll have Nick Laren on. He's going to talk about all the cool new features with distributed Postgres on Cosmos. Uh, so I hope you join us next week for that. Uh, Rory, thank you so much again for joining us. It was great having you. Uh, I know it's getting late there uh, in Johannesburg, so uh, get yourself some sleep. Have some. Uh, is is it gonna, night nurse? Do you guys of... have night nurse in Johannesburg, or is it is it something else? I know night nurse is like a UK medicine. It's like a Nyquil in the UK. And I'm just wondering. No, I, I think that's illegal in South Africa. Like I, <laughs> I, I'm not even going to talk. I'm not even going to mention that live on air. I don't know what that is, but no, we don't have that. You don't have night nurse? Okay. It's like a licorice flavored cold remedy. That... Oh, I thought you were talking about like something to actually like, you know, give me a little bit of a no, no, uh, yeah, no, we don't have that. You don't have night nurse. Okay. Well, find your local equivalent, I guess, maybe, and then you can have a, a nice sleep. So and wake up <laughs> fresh and ready to go in the morning. So, all right, Rory, thank you so much. And thank you folks for joining us. We'll see you all next week. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>